chapter 3 gautama in the town of savati every child knew the name of the exalted buddha and every house was prepared to fill the arms dish of gautam's disciple the silently begging one. near the town of gautam's favorite place to stay the grove of jetwana which the rich and merchant anatha pindika an obedient worshipper of the exalted one had given him and his people for a gift all tales and answers which the two young aesthetics had received in the search of gotham's at port had pointed them towards this area and arriving at savati in the very first house before the door of which they stopped to beg food has been offered to them and they accepted the food siddhar asked the woman who handed them the food we would like to know o charitable one where the buddha dwells the most venerable one for we two samnas from the forest and have come to see him the perfected one and to hear the teachings from his mouth on this woman replied here you truly come to the right place you samans from the forest you should know in jet one in the garden of anath pandika is where the exalted one dwells there you pilgrims shall spend the night for there is enough space for the innumerable who flock here to hear the teachings from his mouth this made govinda happy and full of joy he exclaimed well so thus we have reached our destination and our path has come to an end but tell us o mother of the pilgrims do you know him the buddha have you seen him with your eyes on this woman replied many times i have seen him the exalted one on many days i have seen him walking through the alleys in silence wearing his yellow cloak presenting his arms dish in silence at the doors of the houses leaving with the filled dish delightedly govinda listened and wanted to ask and hear much more but siddhart urged him to walk on they thanked and left and hardly had to ask for direction for rather many pilgrims and monks as well as from gautam's community were on their way to the jet one and since they reached it at night there were constant arrivals shouts and talks of those who sought set shelter and got it the two samans accustomed to life in the forest found quickly and without making any noise a place to stay and rested there until the morning at sunrise they saw the astonishment what a large crowd of believers and curious people had spent the night here on all parts of the marvelous grove monks walked in yellow robes under the trees they sat here and there in deep contemplation or in a conversation about spiritual matters the shady gardens looked like a city full of people bustling like bees the majority of the monks went out with their arms dish to collect food in town for their lunch the only meal of the day the buddha himself the enlightened one was also in the habit of taking this walk to beg in the morning the dhat saw him and he instantly recognized as if the god had pointed him he saw him a simple man in yellow robe wearing the arms dish in his hand walking silently look here siddhart said quietly to govinda this one is the buddha attentively govinda looked at the monk in the yellow robe who seemed to be in no way different from the hundred of other monks and soon govinda also realized that this is the one and they followed him and observed him the buddha went on his way modestly and deep in his thoughts his calm face was neither happy nor sad it seemed to smile quietly and inwardly with a hidden smile quiet calm somewhat resembling a healthy child the buddha walked wore the robe and placed his feet just as all the monks did according to a precise rule but his face and his walk his quietly lowered glance his quietly dangling hand and even every finger of his quietly dangling hand expressed the expressed the perfection did not surge did not imitate breathe softly in an unwitteringly calm in an unwitteringly light and untouchable peace as gautam walked towards the town to collect the arms and the two samans recognized him solely by the perfection of his calm by the quietness of his appearance in which there was no searching no desire no imitation no effort to be seen only light and peace. today we will hear the teachings from his mouth said govinda Siddhar did not answer. He felt little curiosity for the teachings. He did not believe that they would teach him anything new. 
but he had, just as Govinda had, heard the contents of Buddha's teaching again and again. Though these reports only represent second or third hand information, but attentively he looked at Gautam's head, his shoulders, his feet, his quietly dangling hand, and it seemed to him as if a joint of every finger of this hand was of these teachings, spoke of, breathed of, exhaled the fragment of the glistened of truth. This man, this Buddha, was a truthful dawn, down to the gesture of his last finger. This man was holy. Never before Siddharth had venerated a person so much. Never before he had loved a person as much as this. They both followed the Buddha until they reached the town and then returned in silence for they themselves intended to abstain from one this day. They saw Gautam returning. What he ate could not even have satisfied a bird's appetite, and they saw him retiring into the shade of the mango tree. But in the evening, when the heat cooled down and everyone in the camp started to bustle about and gathered around, they heard the Buddha's teaching. They heard his voice, and it was also perfected. Was of perfect calmness was full of peace, Gautam taught teachings of suffering, of the origin of suffering, of the way to relieve suffering. Calmly and clearly his quiet speech flowed on. Suffering was life, full of suffering was the world. But salvation from suffering had been found. Salvation was obtained by him who would walk on the path of birth. With a soft yet firm voice, exalted one spoke, taught the more four main doctrines taught the eightfold path patiently he went the usual path of teachings of the examples the repetitions brightly and quietly his voice hovered over the listeners like a light like a starry sky when when the buddha night had already fallen did his many pilgrims step forward and asked to accept it into the community sought refuge in the teacher Gautam accepted them by speaking you have heard the well. It has come to you well. Thus, join us and walk in Polina to put an end to all suffering. Behold, then Govinda, the shy one, also stepped forward and spoke. I also take my refuge in the exalted one and teaching. And he asked to accept it into the community of his disciples and was accepted. Right afterward, when the Buddha had retired for the night, Govinda turned to Siddhartha and spoke eagerly. Siddhartha, it is not my place to scold you. We both heard the exalted one. We have both perceived the things. Govinda has heard the teaching. He has taken refuge in it. But you, my honored friend, don't, don't you also want to talk and walk on the path of salvation? Would you want to hesitate? Do you want to wait any longer? Siddhartha awakened as if he had been asleep. When he heard Govinda's word, for a long time, he looked into Govinda's face, then he spoke quietly, in a voice without mockery. Govinda, my friend, now you have taken this step. Now you have chosen this path. Always, O oh Govind, you have been my friend. You have always walked one step behind me. Often I have thought, won't Govinda for once also take a step by himself, without me, out of his own soul? Behold, now you have turned into a man, and you are choosing your path for yourself. I wish that you would go it up to its end, O oh, my friend, that you shall find salvation. Govinda not completely understanding it yet, repeated his question in an impatient cup. I beg you, my dear, tell me, since it could not be any other way, that you also, my learned friend, will take your refuge with the exalted Buddha. Siddharth placed his hand on Govinda's shoulder. You fail to hear my good wish for you. O oh, Govinda, I am repeating it. I wish that you would go this path up to its end, that you shall find salvation. In this moment, Govinda realized that his friend had left him and he started to weep. Siddharth, he exclaimed lamentingly. Siddharth kindly spoke to him. Don't forget, Govinda, that you are now one of the Samans of the world. You have renounced your home and your parents, renounced your birth and possession, renounced your free will, renounced all friendship. This is what the teaching requires. This is what the exalted one wants. This is what you wanted for yourself. Tomorrow, O oh Govinda, I will leave you. For a long time, the friends continued walking in the grove. For a long time, they lay there and found no sleep. And over and over again, Govinda urged his friend he should tell him why he would not want to seek refuge in Gautam's teaching. 
what fault he would find in these teachings but siddharth turned him away every time and said be content govind very good are the teaching of the exalted one how could i found fault in them very early in the morning a follower of but one of his oldest monk went through the garden and called all those to him who had his novice and taken their refuge in the teachings to dress them up in the yellow robe and to instruct them in the first teaching and duties of their position then govinda broke loose embraced once again his childhood friend and left with the novices but siddharth walked through the group lost in hope lost in thoughts then he happened to meet gautam the exalted one and when he greeted him with respect and buddha's glance was full of kindness and calm the young man summoned his courage and asked the venerable one for the permission to talk to him silently the exalted one nodded his approval siddharth said yesterday o oh exalted one i had been privileged to hear your wondrous teaching together with my friend i had came from afar to hear your teach and now my friend is going to stay with your people he has taken his refuge with you but i will again start on my pilgrimage as you please the venerable one spoke politely too bold is my speech siddharth continued but i do not want to leave the exalted one without having honestly told him my thoughts does it please the venerable one to listen to me for a moment longer silently the buddha nodded his approval oh, siddharth said one thing o oh, most venerable one i have admired in your teaching most of all everything in your teaching is perfectly clear is proven is proven you are presenting the world as a perfect chain a chain which is never and no here broken an eternal chain in the link of which are causes and effects never before this has been seen so clear never before this has been presented so irrefutably truly the heart of every brahman has to be stronger with love once he has seen the world through your teachings perfectly connected without gaps clear as crystal not depending on chance not depending on god whether it may be good or bad whether living accordingly would be suffering or joy i do not wish to discuss possibly this is not essential but the uniformity of the world that everything which happens is connected that the great and the small things are all encompassed by the same forces of time by the same law of causes of coming to into being and of dying this is what shines brightly out of your exalted teaching o perfected one but according to your very own teaching this unity necessary sequence of all things is nevertheless broken in one place through a small gap this world of unity is invaded by something alien something new something which had not been there before and which cannot be demonstrated and cannot be proven these are your teachings overcoming the word of salvation but with this small gap with this small breach the entire eternal and uniform law of the world is breaking apart again and becomes void please forgive me for expressing this objection quietly gautam had listened to him unmoved now he spoke the perfected one with a kind with a polite and clear voice you have heard the teaching o son of a brahman and good for you that you have thought about it thus deeply you have found a gap in it an error you should think about this further but be warned o seeker of knowledge of the thicket of opinions and of arguing about words there is nothing to opinion they may be beautiful or ugly smart or foolish everyone can support them or discard them but the teachings you have heard from me are no opinion and their goal is not to explain the world those who seek knowledge they have a different goal the salvation from suffering this is what gautam teaches nothing else i wish that you o oh exalted one would not be angry with me said the young man i have not spoken to you like this to argue with you to argue with your words you are truly right there is little opinion but let me say this one more thing i have not doubted in you for a single moment i have not doubted for a single moment that you are buddha that you have reached the goal the highest goal towards which so many thousands of brahmans and son of brahmans are on their way you have found your salvation from death has come to you in the course of your own search on your own path to 
thoughts to meditation through realization enlightenment it has not come to you by means of teach and thus is my thought o oh, exalted one nobody will obtain salvation by means of teach you will not be able to convey and say to anybody o oh, venerable one in words and through teaching what has happened to you in in the hour of enlightenment the teachings of the enlightened buddha contain much it teaches many to live righteously and to avoid evil but there is one thing which these so clear this so venerable teachings do not con- they do not contain the mystery of what the exalted one has experienced for himself he alone among hundreds of thousands this is what i have thought and realized when i have heard the teachings this is why i am continuing my travels not to seek other better teachings for i know there are none but to depart from all teachings and all teachers and to reach my goal by myself or to die but often i'll think of this day o oh, exalted one and of this hour when my eyes behold a holy man the buddha's eyes quietly looked on the ground quietly in perfect his inscrutable face was smiling i wish the venerable one spoke slowly that your thoughts shall not be in error that you shall reach the goal but tell me have you seen the multitude of my samans my many brothers who have taken refuge in the teachings and do you believe o oh stranger o oh saman do you believe that it would be better for them all abandon the teachings and to return into life the word and of desires far is such a thought from my mind exclaimed sadhat i wish that they shall all stay with the teachings that they shall reach their goal it is not my place to judge another person's life only for myself for myself alone i must decide i must choose i must refuse salvation from the self which is what we samans search for o oh, exalted one if i merely were one of your disciples o oh, venerable one i would fear that i might happen to me that only seemingly only deceitfully myself would be calm and be redeemed but that in truth it would live on and grow for then i had replaced myself with the teachings my duty to follow you my love for you and the community of the monks with half of a smile with an unwavering openness and kindness gautam looked into the stranger's eyes and bid him to leave with hardly noticeable gesture you are a wise o oh, saman the venerable one spoke you know how to talk wisely my friend be aware of too much wisdom the buddha turned away and his glance and half of a smile remained forever in siddhat's memory i have never before seen a person glance and smile tit and walk this way he thought truly i wish to be able to glance and smile sit and walk this way so thus free thus venerable one thus concealed thus open thus childlike and mysterious truly only a person who has succeeded in his reaching the innermost part of his self would glance and walk this way well so i ought I also will seek to reach the innermost part of myself. I saw a man, Siddhar thought, a single man before whom I would have to lower my glance. I do not want to lower my glance before any other. Not before any other. No teachings will entice me anymore. Since this man's teaching have not enticed me, I am deprived by Buddha, thought Siddhar. I am deprived and even more he has given to me. He has deprived me of my friend. and one who had believed in me and now believes in him who had been my shadow now gotham's shadow but he has given me siddhart myself this is the end of chapter 3 and i hope you like this and uh, i personally like this chapter a lot because in this chapter they talked about how teaching sometimes is enough for you it's a very deep chapter if you uh, hear it carefully and if you really want to understand what siddhat is going through in his journey from chapter 1 to chapter 3 i understood this character a little more and i hope you'll understand it too thank you very much